So much in our world today suggests that we are the, at the great brink of either or, grow or perish, evolve or, we don't want to think, even think of the or. And this kind of time in history happens over and over again. We think we are unique, we are not. And we often find that times of great breakdown precede times of enormous breakthrough. Renaissances, rinascita, renewal. And it seems to take the catharsis of the breakdown of the old to really begin to activate the splendor, the glory, the unexpected, the enchanted times, which we have called Rinascita, Renaissance, Renewal. I believe from my studies of history that this is where we are right now. And I've been thinking about it and longing for it and studying and, and knowing that there was something profoundly missing at the same time I will have spent a lifetime exploring human potentials and cultural potentials the world over. I knew that quantum physics could only take us so far <laughs> and no more. There was something else behind these new discoveries, these new ways of being and seeing, but in, they were not yet coming together. When I was, what, seven or eight years old, I was part of a very innovative school in New York, and they took us to meet the great elders of the time, and they took us to meet Helen Keller. And when I asked her, why are you so happy? Remember, she was born, oh, by the time she was 19 months old, she could neither see nor hear. And she said to me, holding her hand, with her set of her hand, reading my lips, and with her fingers, my expression, and what she said, and I'll imitate the way she sounded, my child, it is because I live each day as if it were my last, and life in all its moments is so full of glory. Was she damaged? Yes. Was she damaged? Not at all. She had rewoven the remaining aspects and tendrils of her life and of her feeling to be able to catch the universe. It was several months after that that we were taken to meet Albert Einstein. And one of our, and the, he came in, he looked a little vague, very sweet, a lot of hair, had on a blue sock and a red sock, as I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are your questions? And one of our smart aleck kids said, Mr. Einstein, how can we be as, get to be as smart as you? And he said, ah, oh, read fairy tales. We did not like that answer at all. So another smart aleck kid said, well, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be smarter than you? He said, mm, read more fairy tales. Well, that was a disappointment for some of us, but I get, got to talk to him at the side for a, a few moments. I said, Mr. Einstein, you're talking about imagination, aren't you? Yeah, imagination. You know, it is my main quality. I'm actually a terrible mathematician. I have my students do that work, but I have a wonderful imagination. I go riding on the light beam around the world, I understand. And those two stories to stay with me forever, to live each moment of your life as if it your last and to look for the imagination as the way through. All right, it was about well over a year and a half ago, my ancient dog, great big golden doodle, starts to dig in the corner of my bedroom at a rug. Dig, 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 dig. She won't stop. What's the matter? Won't stop. So I went over and I lifted the rug and there was a paper, a scientific paper. I pulled it out and it was about the future existing now. Time past, time present, time future, simultaneous. A very interesting aspect of quantum physics. Whoa. And I immediately got in touch with the author, and Louise Smitsman, who I realized had been trying to get in touch with me, but I'm what is known as a nice public person, and I get hundreds of emails a day. People expecting me to respond in where I can, I do. 
So I didn't quite make the connection. Well, this time I made the connection. This was where I was been thinking for years. How is it that consciousness, which is the universe in total, how does consciousness activate different states and being of consciousness in ourselves? Well, we immediately recognized each other. She was decades younger than I was, but what the heck, I've been around since God had baby teeth. So, you know, age doesn't seem to make much difference. I was, you know, 84 and she was 46. So what we did is that every day since then, every day we spend profound times of dialogue, of exploration and writing. And we wrote a trilogy, a trilogy about consciousness, a trilogy about who we are yet and what is the future self that is there latent within each one of us ready to emerge, but it takes this kind of breakdown to activate the excitement, the passion for the possible necessary to really explore this future human who is as latent in us as was our whole body-mind system emerging from the latency of the fertilized egg, that little dot from which we unfold. So I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna ask Ana Luis to speak further about this and then we will play a scene from our book. And I must, some of you have read the book and I wanna thank you so much for your, your generous remarks that you have made. So Ana Luis, who as I say, I have never met physically, but with whom I have shared this extraordinary intimacy of mind and spirit. And out of this has come this work on the future humans. Anne Louise. Thank you so much, Jean. Yes, and many thanks to everyone here who's been already giving us tremendous support. And um, indeed, the reason for my persistence to <laughs> connect with Jean is because I had a very vivid, very lucid dream. Um, about a year before that, where I dreamt that would become possible if our minds were to converge, creating a new constellation. And I'd had, uh, in my own heart, I'd made uh, a, a promise to the future generations when I was uh, pregnant of my first uh, son, and that was 14 years ago. And uh, in one of those uh, experiences during the pregnancy, I dreamt of the future generations and I dreamt of the future consciousness that was coming to our planet and I noticed we weren't ready for them. And I made a promise then to these uh, children that were still to be born that I would do whatever I can um, so that the world would be ready, that we would understand the gift that they came to bring and that we could really prepare the systems um, for what was their purpose for this time and then when Jean was always talking about the possible human and the possible world. <laughs> I understood that somehow we've been getting the same message from different directions. So when there was that the dream saying, showing what would become possible if we were to bring those promises we'd each made, those visions, those desires of the heart that we've been working with today really together. Uh, and that has indeed been the most incredible journey that uh, we've been on um for all this time now where we are going deep uh, from the heart of the cosmos <laughs> and then back on our planets and so as a context for what we're going to be uh, reading now um we decided to create uh, fictional names uh for the characters but uh the characters are going through all kinds of experiences that are actually based on our own lives uh, and the people that we love and the people around us so it is an allegory and in those stories of the characters um, is also woven together the real science, real historical events, real indigenous wisdom, uh, real deep uh, spiritual and mystical uh, experiences, um, deep initiations as well. Some of those have come out of my own ancestry um, and all this incredible rich uh, mythological understanding uh, of genes. Um, so the book really is uh, a story for all of us. It's the quest of the future humans. And uh, the main character of the book, her name is Rose, because she represents the cosmic rose. She represents the unfolding of the cosmos within us all. And uh, she's in her mid-20s. The story starts really when she's uh, 
uh, hospitalized uh, with COVID uh, and almost dies uh, and has a near-death experience. And during her near-death experience, um, as she kind of reaches out to the universe and says, really, <laughs> that, that's it? You're gonna like what ended like that? You know, I have, that's not okay. <laughs> show me show me another way and the cosmos shows her the power of choice the moment of choice right <laughs> uh, and the power of a conscious choice and brings her deep into the womb of the cosmos where she sees now that there is a new choice that she can make which comes from a different time um it's it's a choice of the future era and there she discovers this beautiful little seed her own future seed her future human potential and she discovers then how to activate that seed. And when she activates that seed within her and goes back to the cosmic tree of life, she starts to understand what's happening with humanity and what's happening for our earth. And she becomes very determined that there must be a new kind of activation for this new era. And she's feeling frustrated that every time when we look at our human journey, when we have these jump time moments or Renaissance periods, there always seems to be collapse and death and <laughs> problems and wars. And she's determined to say, look, we've got to find a new narrative, a new mythos. We need to find a new activation. And, and so she becomes the, the new heroine uh, of that new activation, helped by her incredible grandmother, uh, Icelandic grandmother, Kardandi, um, who is really like a female Merlin. And, um, notices her readiness and guides her through that whole process. So um, Jean is going to be playing for Dandy now. I'm going to be the voice in this uh, for, for Rose, as we're going to share with you uh, a section where she's still um, recovering from COVID, has gone through her near-death experience and has also a very nice friend, Sophia, who's studying to become a medical doctor uh, is part Australian Aborigine, living in the Netherlands. Uh, so there's a lot of multicultural stories woven into that as well. And uh, so you will hear Sophia in the background. And if you want, um, maybe close your eyes uh, or just make yourself really relaxed. So as we're reading this, now imagine that uh, there's a rose in you, there's a Fadandi in you, whether we're female or male. <laughs> These are the, the deeper archetypes of the new time. So, Grandma, how do we then change this mythic pattern in ourselves and in our world, especially when these patterns, they are so deeply ingrained in the structures of our psyches? Well, my dear, we live in a truly unique time right now. Up until recent decades, I doubt that anyone could have done much more than alter certain details of their pattern. But, but now, now that we've entered this time of whole system transformation, when everything is deconstructing and reconstructing, our mythic structure is also changing. Yes. And you see, to change the dominant myths, we need to guide people into the realms of their own psyche first so they're able to access their power to change their own essential story. Oh, that reminds me when I went through my own near-death experience. And remember I told you about that time when I entered the valley of death and somehow I was able then to access my power of conscious choice. And I saw how each choice is a state of consciousness and it's also a coordinate within the landscapes of consciousness that belong to different possibilities. I never really considered that before. The consciousness states of my choices, and instead I was just you know, choosing whatever I felt like in that moment without really considering what my choice would close or make possible. You see, my dear, each choice is a state of consciousness and contains its own codes of a consciousness. A choice, a choice is a seed for the future and can powerfully set the trajectories for, uh, for many years to come. When you realize, when you realize how your choice takes place in consciousness and how the universe is a body of consciousness, you start to understand how we each are also a mything link, <laughs> a mything link for evolving life. 
why don't you ask Sophia and your other friends what narrative ignites their fire and passion for the possible? Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> She's gonna get so excited about that. You know, we talk a lot about creating a world that works, but never from this mythic perspective. For most of us, myth is just something we read about in stories or we see it in the movies. You know, especially those movies with the superheroes and all the legends. Yeah, good old Spider-Man. <laughs> well, you know, Grandma, we never really encouraged to look at our own lives as mythic. But my dear, without this deeper lure of becoming, people will remain asleep within the systems that keep them from accessing their mythic abilities. Education and media today are, are alienating people even further from the true power of their psyches. The key, you see, the key is to live our lives with mythic vibrancy through the use of our imaginal powers. The mythic vibrancy of those who inhabited the ancient stories when partnered with us can create the new maps for our time. The maps of the ancient traditions no longer tend to fit our personal territory to the degree that they once did because of the radical change of our time. Yet, yet the process of map making and finding our, our moral compass for navigating through life and especially through life-threatening situations is at the heart, is at the heart of the mythic structure. Oh, something is starting to sink in now. So I really need a new navigational system then, Grandma. Because, you know, it's just impossible to go back to the way I lived before. It just doesn't fit. My old life died that night in a hospital. But I don't know. How, how do I then navigate my future from where I am now? But you release yourself from old maps, Rosebud. You trust in your inner compass just like you did the night your old life died. You found your way to your new seed of life. You went through a jump time moment, which happens when myth is recreating itself from the stuff of personal experience. For the development of your psyche, this is my dear girl, this is monumental. Give yourself a well-deserved pat on the back. You're developing whole new, inner structures in mind, brain, and psyche that, that are granting you abilities and perspective that have never really been explored before. No small feat. Is that why I need a lot more rest as well? <laughs> yes, you're doing a lot. Uh-huh, so because you know the other night when I was dreaming that my old house burned down and then I decided to make my new home directly under the stars. Huh. That felt like such a powerful metaphor for this burning down of my inner structures and also the death of my former life. Yes. And while our world is on fire and our earth is running her own parallel fever, this burning down of the old maps and archetypal structures of our society is taking place everywhere. And you see, this is precisely what provides the conditions, the conditions for the emergence of new mythic stories. Just like the phoenix rising from her ashes, she needs the fire. She needs the fire for her rebirth. Now that makes sense. So then what do you think is really the most important human power that we need to develop right now to re-mythologize our world and create a new story? Our imaginal creative powers sourced from the ancient wisdom of our heart, Rosie. As you know, the imaginal goes further than the imaginative since it also engages the deeply creative realm of the cosmos itself. Imagination, imagination happens at the level of your own mind and physiology by partaking in the larger and infinite bodies of being and knowledge of the cosmos, you find the keys for, well, actually for invoking the transformative powers of the universe. The universe renews itself from the imaginal realm of the cosmos, which are like, which are like the imaginal cells of the butterfly that are, that are awakening in the skin of the dying caterpillar body that's in the midst of its metamorphosis. The future, you see, the future already exists 
as a cosmic potential within our own imaginal selves, which activates the possibility as well as the transformative powers, the transformative powers for realizing these possibilities. Do, do you remember the mystic Meister Eckhart? Yeah, he's your favorite. Yes, he is my favorite. Well, he once said, the I by which I see God is the same I through which God sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye, one seeing, one knowing, one love. Oh, that's profound. It gives me a lot to think about. You see, this is the true essence of the imaginal state of consciousness, which is far beyond what imagination and where imagination can take us. All of the great mystics were also often very creative people, overflowing with ideas and revelations, precisely because of their, their ability to enter into this state of deep cosmic union, the direct experience of our oneness with the great oneness. Oh, I love that, Grandma. I really, I understand what you're saying. And I know from my own direct personal experience that the imaginal realm, it's real. It's not just happening in our own minds. Well, not that we know what mind is. But you know, the doctors, remember, they couldn't explain my sudden recovery. And I know it wasn't because my immune system fought the virus. I know this so deeply. I really feel like the relationship with the virus shifted the moment I entered my future choice. Like it all got repatterned. Once I understood how this virus is also part of the totality, I entered the possibility of a symbiotic relationship with the virus. And I can actually feel like its codes can even further enhance my ability somehow. Do you have a practice that you can give me? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, Let's go through it together right now. And I'm going to ask everybody, if you choose, to go through this practice now, if you like. To begin, make yourself comfortable as we begin this exercise. Very comfortable. Do some slow and deep breathing. Begin by accepting that there are realms of existence and modes of being that extend beyond your personal mind. You already have imaginal power, we all do, as does life in all its expressions. Your imaginal power is your direct cosmic connection, which naturally connects you to the, the larger realities from where you draw inspiration, guidance, vision, and an intuitive sense of direction, as well as your ultimate transformation. The imaginal realm extends beyond what is more commonly known as the imaginative realm, which is associated with the act of imagination, sometimes fantasy. But the imaginal realm includes the cosmic dimensions that are not merely mental. It also includes the transformative powers of the universe in the way we think, perceive, and respond. Become more conscious now. Become more conscious of your imaginal powers and how you share this power with life and with the universe. Once aware of your imaginal capacities, you can begin to utilize these capacities more consciously to affect the appropriate change in your life and the world around you. All right, you're ready to begin this practice. Close your eyes and take again a few deep breaths. Relax yourself completely, completely, and let go. Then let go some more. Become aware of the life inside you in your breath, in the warmth of your heart, in the flow of your blood, your pulse, in your feelings, thoughts, intentions, even your questions. Life is always inside you. You are 
life. Acknowledge how this same power of life is also within nature, in the plants, animals, oceans, our planet, and the whole universe. Your life force and nature's life force are the same and are deeply connected. The power of renewal, healing, transformation, and rebirth, those powers that are intrinsic to life are also within you. Each of these powers are also imaginal powers, intrinsic to life within you, granting you the capacities to self-create, self-renew, heal, learn, develop, and evolve. Hold the intention now to connect directly with your potent imaginal powers. Feel your imaginal powers awakening, awakening and activating inside of you. You may even experience this as a wonderful, wonderful sensation that spreads through your body as your imaginal powers awaken within you. You are performing an imaginal process. Welcome to a new way of being and exploring. Your imaginal power is your direct access, your direct access to the creative powers of the cosmos. You may call upon this power, enormous, enormous as it is, whenever required. This power yearns to join you and bring profoundly new ways of being and doing to your life. Let your ability to access and direct your imaginal power grow even more. Feel your imaginal powers grow and glow, grow and glow within you. And as this becomes stronger, it is naturally optimizing and enhancing your creative abilities, as well as your capacity to envision and intuit, sets your healing power and your transformative power. So you only need to think of your imaginal power and it naturally activates. It's waiting for you to think about it, to be with it. Your imaginal powers are drawing you forward to the, to the higher realization of the path of your destiny. And if you will, place your hands over your heart and connect with the powerful imaginal genius of your beautiful heart, about which it has been said by the poet that the human heart can go to the lengths of God. Ask the heart to guide you and to infuse your imaginal power with boundless love and wisdom and stay there for the next few moments. And now, my dear, you are ready to connect with the imaginal powers of the universe. Ask the universe to support you with the transformative powers that help you to create, invent, and manifest the experiences and the opportunities that support your higher path and purpose. Feel the surge of these powers as they flow within you. Feel them energizing, igniting, bringing new life and purpose to your life and to your life on the planet at this time. Know that you are partners to each other in the great theater of evolving life. And stay there for the next few moments. And now you're ready to connect with Mother Earth. 
and ask her for support as well, which she graciously grants. You can even ask her how you can support her too as her, her creative partner in evolving life. Hold in your heart the intention of abundant creative goodness and wellness for everyone. See the world and your own life in an optimum state, an optimum state of being, thriving, health. And it is a state of being and thriving and beauty, happy, prosperous. And when you are ready, open your eyes, stretch your body, and be fully present here and now.